or I'll show you my website later. So here we go. Uh, I started teaching physics in 2003. I taught math up until then. And that summer when I told my mom, hey, I'm teaching physics next year, she asked. Well, Calvin, I, she said, I know what math is. It's like numbers and timesings and things. What's physics? And I struggled to give her a good definition. And then I used the definition that my physics prof gave me. Give me one second. I'm going to pause. I'm going to use the same definition that my physics prof used. He was very good. He said, physics is the science of measurement and calculation, but I'm not going to write that. He said, if you're measuring or calculating something, you're doing physics. I like that cam because it really uh, swallows up a lot of stuff, except biology. Sorry. Uh, you know, you're labeling, right? But it leads to another question. What do we measure? The big three. Oh, by the way, I write terribly messy. My handwriting is atrocious. If you ever can't read what I wrote, raise your hand. I will never make fun of a kid for asking me to translate a word. My handwriting, Jaden, has him. Jaden, right? Woohoo! Has him. I didn't have to look. Has improved over the years, which is quite amazing when you realize how bad it is. This is the reason why I type everything. And Hayden, because you're the furthest away, am I writing large enough for you to read? Because I'm not in mid-season form yet. Yes? Okay. Yes. We measure length. What are the fundamental science standard units that we measure length in? Anybody know? Meters. meters. By the way, meters in Canada is actually spelt R-E-S, the same way it is pronounced Z. You can spell it E-R-S if you want to, but I'm a proud Canadian. We measure time in seconds. I'm just going to abbreviate it, S. And we measure mass in should be grams. It should be grams because it shouldn't have a metric prefix in front of it like milli or centi. But a gram is so small, I heard it. In fact, here's what happened. Brandon or Brendan? Brendan with an E? Okay, just got to read your writing. Uh, when they defined the gram, they really should have defined the gram as what currently is a kilogram. They just defined it too small. And it's just not convenient to do science with. These are part of the SI system, the System Internationale. Four years ago, only three countries on Earth had not adopted it. And then Bangladesh adopted it, and we were down to two. Three years ago, Sierra Leone adopted it. There is only one idiot country on earth that hasn't yet adopted the system international. Which one? The US. We're American. We'll measure stuff our way. Oh. North Korea has been metric a long If you want to have any kind of a good science program, you should go metric. And that also explains a lot of it. Anyways, it turns out, in fact, in this SI system, there are seven fundamental units that are defined all the rest are derived from those seven definitions. We're going to be using the top three this year. Next year, if you take physics 12, we'll be using the top four. We won't ever in high school get to the bottom. Oh, you will in chemistry a little bit. So length, I already told you, meters, time, seconds, mass, kilogram. Anybody know what we measure electric current in? Ooh, someone got it first thing. You're right. Where was it? Right here? Hang on, I gotta get your name. Ethan. Ampere. Ethan Smart. Last name seems appropriate. Amps. Ampere. Wait, amps for short. Named after a scientist whose last name is Ampere. Symbol capital A. By the way, what you're gonna find, I try, whenever I give you a new unit, I try to tell you an example of what really big and what really small of that unit is. So that way if you're actually doing a question and you look at your answer, wait a minute, this is this can't be right. I've done something wrong on my calculator. So current. 0 0.004 amps is enough to kill you across your heart. It can ca cause your heart to fibrillate. Okay? It's called the death current, milliamps, if you want to go metric. Uh, 15 amps is what comes out of the plugs. That's enough to kill you. 
I believe around 100 amps, that's what the electric chair is used. That's enough to physically like fry, flames, burn. Uh, in physics 12, if you take physics 12 towards the end of the year, I'll show you an apparatus with 800 amps, which scares the heck out of me, but it's way cool. My favorite unit is the next one. What do we measure temperature in? We don't measure it in degrees Celsius, it turns out. What? What? My name's Kelvin. I, I, I got a unit. Let's, I named that. Sorry, what was that? Kelvin? Uh, yeah, degrees Kelvin, symbol lowercase k if you're in Europe. In North America, they tend to put a degree symbol in front of it, and I think it's because the U.S., because the U.S. measures temperature in Fahrenheit, but there's also Celsius, and there's also Kelvin, so they put the degree symbol in front. But usually in Europe, just the K itself is good enough. What's zero degrees Kelvin? What is absolute zero? What does that mean? Sorry? All motion and matter stops. Maybe. So you're going to find often this year, you're going to get some of this. So here's your first hashtag nerd trivia. If you measure, first of all, you learn in science eight, and you're right, Brendan, I'm, Brendan, with an E. Brendan, you're right that really what you think of as heat is the motion of molecules and atoms. And as you cool them, what you're really doing is you're slowing down their motion. An absolute zero, it's thought, is uh, when all motion stops. Here's the problem. About 10 years ago, a guy wrote a paper on this. He said, you know, when you measure the temperature of anything, what you're really getting is the average temperature. Some of those atoms are probably a little bit above absolute zero. But if you're taking the average and some of them are a little bit above absolute zero, that also means that some of them are a little bit below absolute zero. And then he simply asked, what's that? Nobel Prize for you if you feel like pursuing that. Good. Yeah, people like, we never thought, you're right. We always are taking an average. We don't measure the temperature of a single atom. It's a group of atoms, and it must be an average. And there must be some above, but there must be some below. Hmm. The amount of a substance, you do this in chemistry, 11. If any of my grade 12s have taken chem 11, you'll have seen it. Let me know what we measure the amount of a substance in. Moles. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> the jokes only get worse. The last one to me is the neatest one because all of these first six, if you don't know what one is, if you haven't seen one before, you don't instantly know how big it is. In other words, if you haven't seen a meter stick, you don't know that's a meter. If you haven't heard this, you don't know that's a second. This last one, when I give you the name, you will instantly know how big one is. It's well named. Anybody know what you measure light intensity is? in under the SI system. You measure it in candles, and you now all instantly know exactly how big one candle is, don't you? Yeah, it's that big. You're all visualizing, I think, the same thing. That's a good unit. It's actually candelas, because it's a Latin thing, so. And abbreviation CA. Uh, you'll do moles if you're in Chem 11, Temperature and light intensity, not part of the high school curriculum. Well, you do, uh, sorry, grade eight, you measure the temperature of stuff like in degrees Celsius. Also because to cool stuff down close to absolute zero, you need some, you know, pretty expensive equipment, right? You don't need to memorize any of these. You will end up memorizing meters and seconds and kilograms because you're going to use them a zillion times this year and you'll just get tired of it, but you're fine. In addition, to the base units, the SI system uses prefixes that actually multiply by powers of 10. For example, the prefix kilo means times by a thousand, or since I'm lazy and I'm always looking for a shorter way to write stuff, I would say times by 10 to the third. Way easier to write. Here is a chart. Do you need to memorize these? Hey, if Mr. Duke was clever, he might have put this on the back of your formula sheet. That's A. 
giant. Excellent. So let's start in the very middle where it says base units. So here is where you have seconds or liters or amps or uh, meters or joules or newton or a bunch of stuff you'll learn this year. Let's get bigger. So as we go down, we're getting bigger. I have no idea what the abbreviation for DECA is. We're going to write it down, but I've never bothered memorize. What is the abbreviation for DECA? From your chart, please. It's on there somewhere. DA, lowercase or uppercase? Because I think it makes a difference. Lo okay, lo lowercase d, lowercase a. And when you see that, that's the same as multiplying by 10 to what power? What does it say on the chart? You guys see how the chart's laid out? Right? You don't need to memorize this, but you need to know how to figure out the chart, right? Mm -hmm. 10 to the 1? Yeah. I never use it. I would never say, hey, that's 2 decameters. I'd say, that's 20 meters, which is why I don't know that one. It's kind of a, yeah. And honestly, I don't use this next one either. Hecto, hecto, uh, lowercase h, I think. Is that right? Yeah. And it's 10 to the 2? Is that right? See, I would never say, oh, our football field is one hectometer. It's 100 meters long. Kilo I use, and most of you will get familiar with it because you're going to get your driver's licenses, or you have it already. And we measure speeds in kilometer, kilometers per hour, but we measure exit distances in meters. So you'll see the exit's 1,200 meters, and you'll, oh, it's 1.2 kilometers. So I know kilo is a lowercase k, and it's 10 to the third. Kilo is also special to me because this is my technology generation. When I was 13 years old, I bought a Commodore 64 computer, my first computer, and it had 64K. What did the K stand for? Thousand. Well, kilobytes. 64,000 bytes, 64 kilobytes. Wow, that was a lot of memory. That's great. Uh, mega symbol. Capital M. Mega is also special to me because when I was 21, I bought my first hard drive. It was five megabytes. How was I ever going to fill that? My gosh, who needs that much room? And mega is 10 to, I think now it starts going up by powers of three. Yeah, 10 to the sixth. In fact, I also know that mega is associated with a million and there's that lottery mega millions, which helps me remember that, actually. I didn't try to memorize that. It just kind of happens. I know when someone says mega million. You guys are probably part of the giga generation because your phones are measured in gigabytes. Uh, capital G, yes? 10 to the ninth. About two years ago, I bought... I have sitting right here a one terabyte hard drive. So that's now becoming fairly commonplace. They haven't yet made a phone with a terabyte of RAM. I think 128 gigs is the latest iPhone. And I think that's the, that's the uh, commercial phone that has the biggest amount of installed memory. I know you can add memory cards and stuff like that. But Terra is capital T. And until three years ago, I used to end this chart there. And then Google started talking about petaflops and petabytes on their servers. So I said, OK, I got to extend this. But petaflops, a, a flop is a speed. How fast? A, uh, I think a flop is a certain number of calculations per millisecond that a computer can do. So pet more flops, the computer can crunch, crunch numbers faster. So petaflops. Uh, capital P, yes? And 10 to the 15th? I'm willing to bet by the time you folks are my age, I'm 46, you'll look back on Terra and Giga the way I look back on Mega and Kilo. Probably. You'll probably, I suspect in about 5 to 10 years, they'll start selling petabyte hard drives. And probably in about 15 to 20 years for a good chunk of cash, you'll be able to get something like a petabyte 
hard drive. Maybe not because we're starting to move more and more to the cloud and so it may become more inconvenient to have a physical device holding things. But And then EXA. And there are more, but I don't know them. Is EXA on your chart? I put it. Yeah, okay. Then we get smaller. So uh, probably, I mean, as you guys get older, bigger and bigger and bigger, and those maybe after EXA might start dominating the consciousness. I don't know. Smaller is a little bit different. So let's go smaller. Desi. Oh, by the way, here's the other thing that bugs the heck out of me. Big capital letter, 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 big cap. What? Why aren't these three caps? Those, those things drive the math nerd within me crazy. If I was premier of the world for one day, one of the first things I would change, you know what? All the metric prefixes that make things bigger, how about make them all capital letters? Because that looks bigger. Easy to remember, but I'm not in charge. Lucky for you. Desi, I think Desi is just a lowercase d without the a, right? Just a d by itself. Never use it. And Desi is, uh, is it 10 to the negative 1? And the reason I, I never use it, I wouldn't say, hey, that's one deciliter. I'd say that's 0.1 liters. Easier to write, easier to wrap my brain around. Centi, I do use because I grew up with centimeters. So that's part of my, I, okay, I know what a centimeter is about the width of my pinky. I can kind of visualize that. Okay, so I know centi, lowercase c, 10 to the negative 2, or divide by 100. And I know millimeters because I've seen them on a ruler. They're pretty small. 10 to the negative 3. My Commodore 64, oh, I, my first computer, was called a micro computer. And the reason it was called a micro computer was the chip inside of it was a micro meter. Now they're much smaller, but micro to the science, to the non science public, just means small because the microscope was up. So they're still called micro computers because to the general public, that sounds really small. Okay. Micro, what's the power of 10? 10 to the negative 6. What's the symbol? This. A mu. It's a Greek letter mu. It's where our letter M comes from. It looks like this. What does a Greek cow say? Mu is the standard joke that everyone always says with this. Kay. We're running out of letters, Cam, and so when we run out of letters, we go Greek. We tend to go, you're going to find several things in physics we label with Greek letters because it's just easier to keep stuff straight with. In the last four years, this next one has entered our consciousness. You hear now all the time, oh, this shirt has nano mesh technology. These shoes have nanotechnology. Na uh, oh, the iPod, which is a stupid, it's not nano, anyways, uh, we'll, you know. Lowercase n, yeah? And that's 10 to the negative 9? When you're talking nanometers, now you're starting to talk about molecule-sized. Pico, smaller than that. Lowercase p. Now you're talking smaller than molecules. What are smaller than molecules? Looking for a word that begins with the letter A. Atoms. Okay. Smaller than that is femto. Probably femto will never enter your consciousness because can you build stuff smaller than atoms? No, and, and don't think, well, we don't have the. No, you can't. It's a universal issue. So although bigger probably will keep going, I suspect, in the next hundred years or so, I. From what I understand of the universe and physics, unless a new Einstein comes along and totally revolutionizes how we think of stuff, we're not going to get much small. In fact, we're not going to get much smaller than nano because it's really tough to build something out of an atom because the you know, elements, they're, they're, they're they have their own properties and they're pretty that way. But nano, linking a few atoms together and molecules, okay, that we're, we, we're just starting. 
to begin to be able to do. However, uh, 10 to negative 15. Later on this unit, not today, but later on this unit, I will show you a video of a femto camera, a camera that takes a picture in one femtosecond, and you'll actually see a beam of light moving across the screen. You'll see it. That's how small that is, how fast we're talking about. I'm not even sure Addo is physically possible in our universe. I'll put it there. So if you play sports and you want to insult a teammate but not have them know, you say to them, Addo boy! And they don't realize what you're really saying is, yeah, you're the smallest thing. You know, they think you're saying, Addo boy. No, no, over the head, okay. Tough audience. Tip your waitress. Try the veal. Here we go. Any base unit. Yeah. How's the back? Any base unit can be used with a prefix, so they go together. What I want to talk about now is uh, one theme for the whole course, and then we're going to look at scientific notation. During this course, we're going to use models, often mathematical, to help us understand a particular set of phenomena. But I always have to tell you this on the first day, full disclosure, almost everything that I teach you this year is going to be wrong. It's going to be total garbage. Uh, we're going to throw things and drop things, but we're going to ignore air resistance because the math gets yucky and you need calculus. We're going to look at things hanging from ropes. We're going to hang weights on ropes, but our ropes won't have any mass because the math gets yucky and you need calculus. We're going to look at pulleys but our pulleys won't have any friction or any mass because the math gets yucky and you need calculus. Every once in a while, every once in a while, Daniel, wow, blanked on it. You're going to hear me say, actually, this time we're accurate. But most of the time you're going to hear me say, eh, we're close, but this is total garbage. Sorry. But even so, we can wrap our brains around much of the universe. They'll be good approximations. And since our models will be mathematical, good math skills are a huge help. Here is a review of some of the basics. We're going to start today with scientific notation. Because we're looking at the actual universe, we cannot pick and choose our numbers. The universe has numbers that are really, really big and really, really small. And we don't want to have to write all those zeros. We're naturally lazy. So we have this thing called scientific notation to help us do that. And we need to figure out Derek, good yawn, you're awake now. How it works on our calculators. Tired? Ah! Awake now? No? Good? Okay. Here we go. Here are the rules for a number that is written correctly in scientific notation. Rule number one, there can only be one digit to the left of the decimal. So when you see 12.3 times 10 to the fourth, is or isn't in scientific notation? What would you circle here? What would be the correct answer? Isn't, because there's two digits to the left of the decimal. Circle the isn't, cross out the is. You would have to write it as 1.23 times 10 to the fifth. That's in scientific notation. And to write a number from standard form into scientific notation, what you really do is you count the number of places the decimal point moves. If the decimal point moves to the left, that way, the power of 10 will be positive. Look up. Um, I'm a math teacher. When I just see a plus sign, I go looking for an equation. So this is just me. My abbreviation for the word positive is a plus with a VE next to it, like positive. Otherwise, I think it's from an equation, and the equation got deleted accidentally or something like that. It's just what I'm typing. You can come up with your, by the way, I tend to abbreviate. Come up with your own system, right? If the decimal point moves to the right that way, that means it's a small number, and the power of 10 will be Negative, there's my abbreviation for negative. You can just put a plus or a minus there if you want to. You can write the word positive. You can write the word negative. I don't care. Whatever works for you. If I bold font something and put stars around it, probably that means it's important. It is very important that you learn how your calculator handles scientific notation. 
If you're someone who tends to borrow calculators, I will not help you figure out how that calculator works. In fact, if you are foolish enough to show up to a test with a friend's calculator, and Mr. Duick, how do I type in? Not only will I not help you, I'll probably stand next to you while you're writing the test and do an evil laugh. Because <laughs> to me, that's not acting like an adult. So we're going to spend the next few minutes figuring out your calculator. Now, if you don't have one today, I will still on Monday show you how your calculator works. That's it. If you don't have one Monday and you want to figure out your calculator, either you're on your own or you have to see me outside of class time. But during class time, I'll say, nope, been there, done that. The Earth weighs that much. It does. How did they figure that out, Mr. Duick? It's not like you can put it on a scale. We'll actually calculate the mass of the Earth ourselves uh, near Christmas time. But preview of coming attractions. How would I write this in scientific notation? This is a big number. So I'm going to write the first digit and the decimal. I write any non-zero digits. And then to show how far I've moved the decimal, it's going to be times 10 to the what? Now, it's not count the zeros. It's count how far the decimal moved. It started here, it moved to there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I counted 24 kilograms. Can someone check on the back of your purple sheet, of your formula sheet, on the back page? I do have the mass of the Earth somewhere. Does it say 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, I hope? That, by the way, that many zeros, I tend to do, go loopy and use the loops because I'm the king of miscounting. Smaller, I'll try and do it in my head, but for long, and yeah, someone said 24 right away. I just wanted to model how I tend to count. To me, that's maximum bang for minimum buck. That's showing as little work as possible while being as organized as possible. You're going to hear me use that phrase a lot, maximum bang for minimum buck. I want to show as little work, but be as organized as I can. I'm lazy and organized. One proton has a charge of zero point blah 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 one six coulombs. This is called the elementary charge or the fundamental charge of the universe, by the way. This is a small number. How would I write that in scientific notation? Well, the first non-zero digit as I move from the decimal pa place is a one point six times ten. And because I know this is a small number, and I also know my brain is kind of stupid sometimes, and I'm about to count. I always put the negative now, because the number of times I've forgotten to put the negative after counting would amaze you. So I always, I know it's small and negative. And then I count. Start here, end there. I think, yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, be an active participant in physics. In other words, you'll often see me pause and say, try this on your calculator. Best thing you can do is make your calculator mistakes during the lesson so that you don't do them on the, every, every year I see kids on the test and they have all the right numbers written down and the wrong answer. And I know, yeah, they were too dumb to bother doing it in class and find out how to type this into your calculator and avoid making mistakes. So follow along and pay attention. How would we type this in? Well, we'll get there in a second. Do two more. Every once in a while, you'll get a number not as a decimal, but written out in English. The temperature of the sun is 15 million kelvins, which it is. I will probably never do that to you if I'm making up the questions, but I don't have control over all the resources from other places. And you should be able to go from English to math, just scientific notation. So I would go like this, 15 million. How many zeros is that?
Have I done my uh, billion versus Europe and North America little thing yet? No? Hashtag nerd trivia. Um, by the way, what comes after million? Only in North America. Not in Europe. In Europe, thousand million, hundred thousand million, billion. A billion in Europe is a million millions. And if you don't think that leads to some confusion on the world economics stage when they start talking about billion dollar debts from different countries and things, <laughs> Vancouver could probably handle a billion dollar debt. It'd be ugly. Certainly BC could handle a billion dollar debt. It'd be ugly, but we could do it. The world in Europe could not handle a billion dollar European billion debt. So. I thought numbers were the same everywhere. Nope. Hashtag nerd trivia. Here we go. Back here. I uh, want to write this now in scientific notation. You know what? This one I think I can count without going loopy. I'm pretty sure this is 1.5 times 10 to the 7th Kelvin. What? Kelvin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you have to draw the loops. But I don't. Uh, also, you should be able to go from scientific notation back to standard form. Back to scientific notation. Back to standard form. If I do my job right by about November, this will almost be like speaking English. You won't even think about it. In fact, you'll probably, when you see one number, you'll just see the other number in your head, vice versa. That's, I, I want to hopefully, we'll build a circuit that in your brain that just does that. For now, is the exponent negative or positive in this example here, example four? Negative, that means it's a small number, so I'm going to go zero point. Samuel, what is the exponent? Negative, negative what? Seven. One more time, for, you're right. Negative what? Negative seven. That's how many I'm going to count, but listen close. It's going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. The five is the seventh digit, not seven zeros, and because it, it's seven spots from the decimal, not seven zeros. And the four gets tacked on. Uh, meters. Now, let's be very, very clear. If you didn't make me, I would never write it out that way because that's too much work. I'm lazy. I would always write it out this way. But on a test, I'll probably ask you to go back and forth a couple of times. How do we enter stuff in scientific notation on our calculators? Well, it depends what kind of a calculator you got. Here is what you do not, this is the one button that kids love and you absolutely don't want to use it. All of your calculators somewhere have a button that says that. You do not want to use it. It's not going to work the way you think. It's actually an anti-logarithm and it does something different. What you're going to look for most of you will have a button and it's going to be bottom row middle or somewhere on the left column. Some of you will have a button, almost always that one will be in the bottom row dead center. Some of you will have a button, That one is a bit trickier to find, especially if you have a TI calculator. If your calculator is a TI, on my TI, my scientific notation button is right there. It's actually second function uh, comma for me. So right now I'm going to pause the video. If you cannot find your scientific notation button, raise your Some of you are going to be tempted to actually type six, a point, a two, a three, and then you're going to want to hit the time sign. You're going to want to hit a one and a zero, and then you're going to want to hit your y to the x or your exponent button, and then you're going to want to type a negative and a five. Here's the problem. All of the software of the calculator, if you type it that way, it won't know that this is all supposed to be one number. And if you do math to this number, it will only do it on that it won't know that you also want that same math to occur on the 6.23. If you use your scientific notation button, the software knows link that together. So if you square root it, it'll square root the whole thing like it's supposed to. Or if you divide it, it'll divide the whole thing like you're supposed to. It won't just divide that last thing. So you do not want to type it out the long way. 
and it's also less work to type it out the short way convenient so it's kind of a win-win you also want to notice how your calculator displays scientific notation some of yours actually show it as a times and a ten and an exponent if I let me erase this because this is wrong Ugh. Uh, by the way, you might want to jot down right here how you type scientific notation in on your calculator so you don't forget. On my calculator, when I type this number here, I go 6.23. I have that little e, a cap. By the way, that capital E is because this is not a calculator. This is actually called a handheld computer. And on a computer, scientific notation is displayed as a capital E. And then I would go negative, what is it, 5. If I get an answer in scientific notation, I have learned on my calculator, whenever I see that E, I handwrite in my answer key times 10 to the negative 5. So we're going to finish off doing a little bit of arithmetic with our calculators and scientific notation. Uh, by the way, I'm going to leave this blank because you're going to fill in how your calculator works there, right? So I'm not going to put mine there. I'm worried if someone looks at the notes later, they'll think all of them work that way. They don't. Once again, those uh, eight of you that don't have a calculator here, Monday, if you have a calculator, I will show you how to use it still. After that, see me after school or figure it out or ask a neighbor or ask a friend, but I'm not going to waste class time anymore. So example one, performing calculations. Are those numbers in scientific notation? Yes. Okay. Even more basic. Ready? Is there a fraction in this question? Everybody say yes. Is there more than one number on the top? Is there more than one number on the bottom? What that means is I'm going to put the top in brackets. I'm going to put the bottom in brackets. However, all of you look up for a second. Handwriting or typing numbers and typing things on our calculator, I don't do them the same way. Watch for a second. Don't write this down. When I type, to me, that, those two brackets are easier to separate numbers. And you all know that two brackets kissing together means what mathematical operation right there? Times. When you type that in your calculator, it's too many brackets and you'll lose track of them. So whenever I have multiplication, two brackets kissing, I just replace that with a times. In other words, pick your calculators up. I would type this in as follows. Is there a fraction? Is there more than one number on the top? I would open a bracket. Done. Then I would go 1.8, hit my scientific notation button. Point number two, look up. If you have a good calculator, your calculator will have a difference between a subtraction sign, which on mine is there, and a negative button, which on mine is there. And you cannot get them mixed up, or you're going to get a syntax error. And I know, is this a, that exponent, is that subtraction, or is that exponent a negative? This little 3 here, is that meant to be 10 take away 3, or is that meant to be 10 to the power of negative 3? So I have to use a negative button, 3, not a subtraction. I said, I'm not going to put a bracket here. I'm not going to replace. I'm going to replace the kissing brackets with a times sign. Next one, 2.6, scientific notation button, 5. Have we finished the top? Close off the top. When you have a fraction, what mathematical operation does that really mean? divided by. Is there more than one number in the bottom? Brackets. In front of the not, uh, or sorry, I'm looking at the wrong question here. Uh, nine, scientific notation button eight, times 1.3, scientific notation button negative one, close off the bottom. If you've done this right, this works out evenly uh, with some scientific notation, but it's like uh, it's 4 times 10 to the something. I think. Now, my calculator shows me the answer in scientific notation. Your calculator might say 0. 0.000004. We 
which is the same answer. If yours says point zero 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 four, which is the same answer, and you want it to go scientific notation, raise your hand right now and I'll show you. Okay, and you'll need to pause the video. Also, if you didn't get that, call me and I'll find